Hey guys, this is Substitute Topher. This week I am in Southern Florida driving a 2023 Nissan GTR Premium. I know you guys are probably quite familiar with the R35 GTR at this point, but this car is due for some updates for the 24 model year. So I thought we would revisit the glory that is the Nissan GTR with this 2023 model. Let's go ahead, start it up. We'll walk you around it and then we'll take it out on the road and we'll show you what it's like to drive. What better vehicle to have in Florida than a GTR and especially a Bayside Blue GTR. I think this is the best color that they currently offer on this thing. It's iconic, it looks fantastic, and I have just had an absolute joy driving this thing this week. You all will remember we had a Bayside Blue GTR about three years ago on Blizzax, and well, it's nice to finally be back in Godzilla for another week. Let's talk about some basics before we walk you around this thing. This is powered by a hand-built 3.8 liter twin turbocharged V6. It makes 565 horsepower and 467 pound-feet of torque. And of course, power is sent to all four wheels via a six-speed dual-clutch automatic transmission. And the gearbox is set at the back for better weight distribution. We have a titanium exhaust on this car really just looks the part. For 24, it's got some different bumpers and the Nismo gets a front limited slit, but otherwise this thing is staying mostly unchanged for the foreseeable future. And I think that that is quite all right. Nissan got this car so dialed in in 2009 when it came out, I was 11 years old. And uh, well, I remember that just like it was yesterday. And I do kind of feel like I'm driving around in 2009 still, but that's part of why I love this car so much. Here's our VR38, 3.8 liter twin turbocharged V6. This one hand built by Tsunimi Uyama, one of the four Takumi craftsmen that hand assemble these 3.8 liter V6s. Kind of a cool touch to get that plaque on there and such an honest looking engine bay. I've always loved what Nissan has done with appearance of this 3.8 liter and I'm glad that they haven't messed with it. This GTR weighs just under 4,000 pounds, which I think is funny because I remember when this car came out, everyone was giving it grief for how heavy it was, but uh, well, consider the new BMW M2. This weighs just about the same. For tires, we are on a Dunlop Sport Max Extreme Performance Summer Tire. Now, I wanna give a bit of a disclaimer. These are the tires that are supposed to come on this car, but this thing has been to a couple of track events. These are heat cycle tires and they do make a bit of a racket. So you guys will hear that uh, during some of our lower speed driving. But uh, these are the factory tires and they do a hell of a job gripping. But when it comes to just comfort and noise level, not sure that these are tires that I would recommend. I'd probably opt for something more like a Bridgestone Potenza Sport for daily driving. But these are what you get from the factory. We have a 255 section on the front, a 285 section on the rear. Of course, this is all wheel drive, but we do have quite a clever torque vectoring system that can send majority or all of the power to the rear wheels if that is what's necessary. Let's take a look in the trunk. Small opening, but a pretty usable space. You can see I've got my sweatshirt back here and this is a deep trunk. I can see you fitting a couple of suitcases back here. First aid kit and we even get a little leather strap to pull the trunk shut. Such an iconic design, and I have gotten a ton of attention in this car this week, which I guess I, it's been so long since I've driven one of these, I forgot what it's like. Lots of positive attention, lots of thumbs ups, and all good vibes here in the GTR. Let's hop in, show you the interior, which admittedly is unchanged since I think 2017. I believe that's when they gave this car a facelift, which gave us this beautiful new steering wheel and the current front and rear fascias that we have on this car. Pretty standard Nissan infotainment, except for this little button on the right-hand side, Function, which allows us to go through all of our iconic GTR gauges. 
this is another thing that I distinctly remember from when this car came out is how up in arms people were about how this car was a nerd fest, how it was too computer controlled. And I feel like that's quite the opposite in today's world because everything has just been turned up to 11 as far as electronic nannies go and everything. And this GTR has kind of stayed the same. So we have a lot of that 2009 tech. And in my opinion, total golden era for sports cars, um, the early 2000s. So or I should say early to late 2000s. So we have all these gauges still in this car. Um, otherwise, regular Nissan infotainment. We have wired Apple CarPlay in this car. The screen doesn't react super quickly and it's still that matte finish, so it does feel a little bit old. I think we'll leave this on our little gauge display today. Quite a bit of carbon fiber on our center console. This GTR also has the premium interior pack, which gives us extended leather, and just an overall nicer quality of leather. It's about a $4,000 package, ups the MSRP of this particular car to 123 grand. Base price is 116. Obviously, physical climate control panel still. We have our three different mode selectors down here for our drivetrain, our suspension, and our traction control. Let's put this GTR into drive or reverse first to show you our reversing camera. Lots of mechanical noise from this six speed dual clutch transmission. And I really do love that about this car. I love how raw and visceral it is still. And I'm thrilled to hear that it's going to be essentially the same for 2024. So down here we can toggle ourselves from automatic to manual mode. We'll start today's drive in automatic to give you guys a taste of what that's like. We'll also drop our suspension down into comfort mode. This thing really softens up for daily driving use. can hear a bit of what I'm on about with those tires. <laughs> All right, let's go most aggressive mode for the drivetrain. Let's put ourselves into manual mode here and we'll give you a taste of what this GTR can do. <laughs> Zero to 60 is still dealt with in under three seconds. And in 2017, they kind of revised everything and gave this thing a little bit more soul. So we have some good bangs on our upshift and we have some pops and burbles on the down rev. <laughs> and I was very pleased with how this GTR handled putting on the miles, of course, at the end of the day, this is a GT car. It should be able to do some grand touring. But I thought maybe since this is such a driver's car, it would get a little bit uncomfortable after a couple of hours on the road, but it did a great job. It's soft enough. The seats with this premium interior package, they're nice and squishy. And really no complaints as far as that goes. The only thing I did find is that this GTR has some pretty notable blind spots, and I do wish that they would give us a blind spot warning system. If I had to add one bit of technology to this ancient car, I would add some blind spot monitors, but otherwise I think it's perfect how it is. Tons of torque all the way throughout the rev range. Where this GTR really shines though is off the line. So let's stop, let's do a launch control. We hold all three buttons, up, up, up. Red, 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 there we go. And let's quickly stop here while we have an open stretch of road and we'll do a quick launch. kind of just sums up this car really well. I feel 
young, well, I mean, I, I guess I kind of am young still, but I feel younger. I feel like I'm in high school driving this car, and it just puts the biggest smile on your face. It's such a good time. This car gives me the fizz in a way that nothing else from 2023 or 2024 gives me, and I absolutely love it for that. Nissan set out to build the ultimate driver's car in the late 2000s, and the amount of money and engineering and effort that they put into this car still holds up in 2023. This car has modern levels of performance. Sure, there are some things that have surpassed it, but you've got to remember, this thing was destroying Lamborghinis, Ferraris, Porsches back when it came out, and it's still able to hang pretty dang close. I love the steering wheel. I love the paddle shifters. I think the facelift in 2017 really dialed this car into where it should be for the modern era. screen. So what about stopping power? Well, we have six piston Brembo's on the front and we have four piston Brembo's on the rear. We also have a four corner adaptive suspension or active dampers I should say. <laughs> Steering feel is fantastic. It's a little on the light side but you know I usually prefer a lighter steering rack and this GTR just feels perfect in my opinion want to apologize for a couple of things. For one, um, I'm in Florida, so there aren't really any curvy roads. So I've chosen this road that, as you can tell by the 14 million uh, vultures over here, is by a dump. Additionally, I'm in Florida, so there are no clouds in the sky, meaning that it probably looks quite dark in this black interior. But I hope that you all are able to get a sense of what it's like to drive this R35 GTR, because it is just bliss. This is, if you love nothing more than driving, this is still the car for you. It's no frills, it's no BS. And it absolutely rips. <laughs> From a daily driving standpoint though, there are still things in place in this GTR, of course, that make things easier for you. It has things such as cruise control. Very good. We have a volume adjuster for our Bose 11 speaker sound system on the steering wheel over here. We have automatic headlights. I don't think we have automatic wipers, but we gloss over that. Uh, we have heated seats in this car with a high and a low setting. We have some very loud Dunlops. <laughs> I've been driving this car around West Palm Beach for most of the week, and everywhere in Palm Beach has a 25 to 35 mile an hour speed limit. And as you can hear, we'll actually slow it down a little bit. We'll slow down to like 40. All you can hear are these tires. And I think with this car having almost 11,000 miles, with it having gone to a couple track events, I think these are just kind of heat cycled out and just at the end of their life. So probably explains why they're making a bit of a racket, but I would expect these tires to make a bit of noise when they're brand new as well. So when we had this car on Blizzax, it was a lot more daily drivable in winter in Michigan a couple of years ago. guys some highway manners here on the GTR. We'll settle in a bit, we'll use cruise control, and then we'll give you a chance to listen to this 11 speaker Bose sound system. I know in the last review we did a bit of a demo as well on that, but we'll give you another chance to refresh your memory on that. As far as NVH goes, honestly these Dunlops kind of calm down once you get about 55-60 miles an hour. What I love about this six-speed is that 
at highway speeds you're revved at about 3,000 RPM, just below here at 79 miles an hour. So you have a usable amount of torque, you're still in the power band, you're able to make passes without having to downshift. And even if you do have to go down into fifth, like we just did back there, it isn't sudden, it doesn't jerk you down into second or third gear to do a pass. So that is nice. And um, just such a nice powertrain in this thing. So let's go ahead and give you a chance to listen to this 11 speaker Bose. Also use our cruise control, which is just standard, no adaptive cruise or anything in this car. Easy to use though. Press the cruise control button and then you set with this little toggle. by this sound system. I, mean, I don't really think they've done much changes to it, uh, literally since this car came out. For being 11 speakers, it does a great job. They've got the really cool central mounted sub in between the two back seats, which is very iconic GTR, so I'm glad that they still have that. And overall, it just, it sounds good, you know? Uh, Nissan always does a good job with their Bose systems and it's no different here in this GTR. So as far as highway manners go, good sound system, minimal NVH while cruising. I mean, of course, we still have a little bit of tire noise here, but not as bad as at lower speeds. And we were getting about 26 mpg on the highway yesterday on our way down to Miami, so very usable as a commuter. I suppose we should also address... Hold on. We should also address that this car still feels remarkably tight for being a press car with 11,000 miles on it. Journalists and YouTubers are not kind to these press cars, and especially with this being the flagship performance Nissan, I'm sure that this car has been quite abused, and there are no shimmies, there are no rattles from the drivetrain, from the suspension, anything of the sort. This car feels as dialed in as I'm sure it felt when it was fresh off the lot. So I think that that also speaks a lot for the time and the care that Nissan puts into building these GTRs. It's a little bit of a tough sell, you know, oh, it's a $120,000 Nissan, but at the end of the day, you have to remember that this has been developed by a completely separate team of engineers that are only focused on driving. And while well, they must've hired someone to come around and do the interior as well, because it's well put together. All of the materials in here are nice. Everything's wrapped in leather. Nothing squeaks, rattles, shakes, feels out of place. And this car has held up to the test of time. And as far as I've heard, I mean, these things are pretty reliable too. I've known some people that have owned them and they've they've had a really good experiences. I've had a fantastic few days with this Nissan GTR. And now that I'm a little bit more experienced driving, I've driven a ton of cars in between the 2021 and this 2023. I have such a huge appreciation for this thing. I want one. I want a GTR now. So maybe this will be the new goal vehicle for me. Mechanical handbrake. That's always nice. We're going to go ahead and wrap up today's video and uh, we'll do a little bit of low speed driving here. We'll put the car back into automatic mode. We'll give you guys an idea of how that acts. In typical supercar fashion, you know, we're in sixth gear going 40 miles per hour. As far as MPG goes, uh, on our trip to Miami from West Palm Beach yesterday, we did about 26 MPG, so not too bad of a figure. That number has gone down, hovered around the 20 to 22 range and just kind of city 35 mile an hour driving. So this GTR isn't as much of a gas guzzler as you may expect. 
certainly daily drivable. The only thing I would do is switch these tires out and I'm thrilled with this car otherwise. There's nothing else I would change about this. I'm really starting to love cars that feel a bit older than they are. I loved the Lexus LX for that exact reason before they changed it around 2021, 2022. And this GTR still has such a charm. It's such a charming car. It's so fun to drive. I absolutely love it. We have a number of other videos on the GTR on the channel. I just wanted to go out and remind you all of how lovely the Nissan GTR is and how if you all have the means, you should be having yourself a GTR because it's just such an excellent driver's car. Yeah, it's a good thing. All right, let's park up here. We'll give you one last look at the GTR. And that'll wrap it up for us today. Thank you guys all so much for watching. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions about this thing or if I left anything out, let me know. There's our back seat. Not super usable, more usable I would say as a parcel shelf or for your phone when you have CarPlay connected because there's not really anywhere to put your phone up here. Unless you close your cup holders and set it on top of that. Yes. Godzilla is still mighty. Godzilla is still relevant. I think this R35 will go down in history. Not super appreciated at first, but I think becoming more and more appreciated. Hopefully not forgotten. Hopefully this reminds you all about how lovely this car still is. And uh, yeah, that'll wrap it up for us today. Again, thank you guys for watching, and we'll see you in the next video. Take care.